Welcome to St. Stephen's Episcopal Church in Seattle. We're glad that you're joining us for worship today. To more fully participate in the liturgy, you may download a bulletin from the link right below. You may follow the link below to donate to St. Stephen's, and you may also follow that same link to donate to the local food banks in Seattle, or if you are near St. Stephen's, you can bring food and place it in the bins at our doors. Blessings to you this day. Worship will begin in a moment. Come from scattered lives to meet with God. Let us recognize God's presence with us. As God's people we have gathered, let us worship God together. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you and the splendor of your temple. On the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, Make us have perpetual love and reverence for your holy name. 
For you never fail to help and govern those whom you have set upon the sure foundation of your loving kindness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from Jeremiah. O Lord, you have enticed me, and I was enticed. You have overpowered me, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughingstock all day long. Everyone mocks me. And whenever I speak, I must cry out. I must shout violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and derision all day long. If I say I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, then within me there is something like a burning fire shut up in my bones. I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot. For I hear many whispering, terror is all around. Denounce him, let us denounce him. All my close friends are watching for me to stumble. Perhaps he can be enticed, and we can prevail against him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me like a dread warrior. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble, and they will not prevail. They will be greatly shamed, for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, you test the righteous. You see the heart and the mind. Let me see your retribution upon them, for to you I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy from the hands of evildoers. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Psalm 69, verses 8 through 20. Surely for your sake have I suffered reproach, and shame has covered my face. I have become a stranger to my own kindred, an alien to my mother's children. Zeal for your house has eaten me up, the scorn of those who scorn you has fallen upon me. I humbled myself with fasting, but that was turned to my reproach. I put on sackcloth also, and became a byword among them. Those who sit at the great murmur against me, and the drunkards make songs about me. But as for me, this is my prayer to you at the time you have said, O Lord. In your great mercy, O God, answer me with your unfailing help. Save me from the mire, do not let me see. Let me be rescued from those who hate me and out of the deep waters. Let not the torrent of waters wash over me, neither let the deep swallow me up. Do not let the pit shut its mouth upon me. Answer me, O Lord, for your love is mine. In your great compassion turn to Hide not your face from your servant. Be swift and answer me, for I am in distress. Draw near to me and redeem me, because of my enemies deliver me. A reading from the letter to the Romans. Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed, 
and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciples to be like the teacher and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that not, will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I have to admit that I find the bit of scripture that we call Jeremiah to be a puzzlement. I don't particularly like Jeremiah, but I'm drawn to it. I think it was the anguish spilling out of that personal voice of what we now call the confession section that first attracted me to Jeremiah. These verses, well, they... They reached out with these invisible threads and they drew me in. They made claims on my being without my knowing when or why. The connection is complex to say the least as it is bewildering. During the years Babylon subjugated the southern kingdom, the people of Judah were, well, they were invaded multiple times. The Babylonian exile saw leaders deported to Babylon more than once. And there was a half a century of foreign occupation of the land. The promise of God was broken. And far from just Jeremiah's vocational meltdown... This confession is the outcry of the people. This is the voice of a people mired in loss. The word that gives voice to sorrow, failed expectations, the inability to experience the life that was promised. 
God, you deceived us. You cheated us. But you promised something different. A land flowing with milk and honey. A covenant community. A relationship between you and the people. A people that were supposed to be a blessing to the nations. This was all promised to them. Jeremiah's confessions not only give voice to the pain of this people, not just an expression of the community's disaster that they live in, they give shape to the community's loss. And they help recreate the community in hope for the future. Jeremiah's confessions mirror the community's shattered life. They enact it. They put it into the public square. They give voice to faith's collapse, move through doubt and despair, uncertainty and disintegration of trust. The confessions, they draw us into a complex world. Not a simplistic world of good and bad, of justice and injustice. They portray a world of ambiguity, of uncertainty. But they give this glimmer of hope. A way to engage in a relationship with God. A way to step from the life of shattered loss into living in God's promise. I think we might need Jeremiah's confessions just now. We're also living, I think, in a complex world, filled with ambiguity and uncertainty. Continued response to COVID-19, the poor people's virtual gathering, Black Lives Matter, CHOP Seattle, all give voice to the pain of this people. They give shape to our community's loss. We need help to recreate this community and hope for the future. In the Gospel for today, Jesus continues this prophetic task. He invites people into a new reality, a reality in which all are equal, all are included. Jesus envisioned a shalom for the people of the world, a place of peace, a place of sufficient food, a place where people are sheltered, a place where people are cared for, a place where people find justice, mercy, forgiveness, love. All people. A place where God's promise in Jesus welcomes all together at God's table. And to get to that place, Jesus invites us to go along the way from grief, loss, experience denied, to God's new life. The powerful reality where God is at the center of all, claiming us, transforming us. A place where God's love finally has the last word. Let us profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit 
the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world, saying, God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory to the world. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of freedom, we pray for our nation and all the nations of the world for peace and unity across barriers of language, color, and creed, for elected and appointed leaders that they would serve the common good, inspire all people with courage to speak out against hatred, to actively resist evil, unite the human family in bonds of love. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to do your honor and glory. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. We pray especially for Annie, Kathy, Joy, Norma, Beth, Betsy, Heidi, Peggy, Caroline, Carol, Rita, Marshall, Marilyn, Larry, Tom, Jan, Lori, Karen, Barbara, Max, Nancy, Donna, Richard, Jackie, Gracie, Jean and Marilyn, Alice and Diane. Touch them with your healing hand and bring them to know wholeness, wholeness again in you. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of grace, we pray for those who have died, for the faithful in every generation who have worked for justice, for prophets who called us to racial reconciliation, for martyrs who died because of hatred, and for all the communion of saints. Make us faithful to your call to proclaim your good news by word and example, and bring us at last into the glorious company of the saints in light. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give our thanks, O God, for the fathers in our lives. Without the manual, reality teaches us that some fathers excel while others fail. We ask for your grace and blessing for them, and forgiveness where it is needed. We remember the sacrifices fathers make for their children and families and the ways, both big and small, they lift children to achieve dreams thought beyond reach. So too, we remember all those who have helped fill the void when fathers are absent. For those who are fathers, we ask for wisdom and humility in the face of the task of parenting. Give them the strength to do well by their children and by you. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayers, holy God. Breathe your spirit over us and all the earth, that barriers would crumble and divisions cease. Make us more fully your co-healers of the broken world. Unite us with all people in bonds of love, that the whole earth and all its peoples may be at peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you.
Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, for you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death. We proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with our patron Stephen and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. 
through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. After his resurrection, Jesus was known to his disciples in the breaking of the bread. The gifts of God for the people of God. God, you hold both heaven and earth in a single piece. Let the design of your great love shine on our anger and sorrow. Give peace to your church, peace among nations, peace in our cities, peace in our homes, and peace in our hearts. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God, who has called you, is faithful. Go into the world with joy, love extravagantly, forgive generously, live abundantly, and the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.